stay prayerful. Let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you, flow to you. but you thank you Jesus let all my worship let all my praise flow to you flow to you hallelujah all my worship but you stay prayerful come on all my worship all of my worship yes all of my praise flow to you father show yourself hallelujah 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 oh jesus all of my worship all of my worship all of my praise flow to you come on sing with me yeah, let's go, let's go. All my worship, let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you, flow to you. All my worship, let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you. Nobody but you. All my worship, all of my worship, yeah, stay prayerful. All of my praise flow to you. Thank you, Jesus, nobody but you. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Let's lather in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, all my worship, let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you, flow to you. Father, show yourself. Hallelujah, you're in a prayer meeting with us. Let's lather in his presence, let's soak in the glory. There's healing in his presence, glory. The Bible says it like this, he inhabits the praises of Israel. Hallelujah. He doesn't inhabit the complaints. He doesn't inhabit the complacency. He says, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. He inhabits the praises. Thank you, Jesus. Why do the people of God say hallelujah so much? Because hallelujah is a Hebrew word that means praise the Lord. It's the highest praise. It means praise ye the Lord. You Praise the Lord. Let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you, flow to you. Thank you, Jesus. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, not 75% of the time. Not 33.6%. We're not going into decimals. He said, I will, we're not going into fractions one third of the time. No, I will bless the Lord at all times. But how can that be done? Well, the spirit itself maketh intercession. Glory be. He said, he ever liveth to make intercession for the saints. The Lord will use you as a vessel, as an instrument. Let all my worship, let all my worship. Glory be. And it really isn't my worship because it says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, but ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God again. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And that I don't belong to myself. Remember again, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein, for he hath founded it upon the seas 
and established it upon the floods. Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands. But he said, how can this be? How can this be? Hallelujah. Because it, they said, who can do this? He said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. So he's worshiping himself using us as a vessel. He's praising himself using us as a vessel. Hallelujah. It says you do not know what to pray for. The Spirit itself maketh intercession. Hallelujah. Mashanda alamaka. Jesus. All my worship. All of my worship. Yes. All of my praise flows to you. Glory be. Hallelujah. My Santi Anna Allah. You've joined us in a prayer meeting. Glory be. The unction is won or lost before you sit down to the keyboard. The man of God said it like this. He said, the unction is won or lost before you ascend the pulpit. This ain't no time to try to get sanctified. This ain't no trap. You can't conjure up the anointing. You gotta already be praying. You gotta already be fasting. You gotta already be eating that book, the Holy Bible. Hallelujah, let all my worship, let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you. Take it up. Nobody but you. Yes. Let all my worship, all of my worship, yeah. All of my praise. Hallelujah. Let's rock in the spirit. Let's rock in the spirit. Come on. David dance before the Lord. He said, I'll be yet more vile than this. I'm because somebody had the audacity. They had the unmitigated call to be a hater. And when David was praising the Lord, uh, she didn't like it. And uh, it was Saul's daughter. But Paul said, I'll be yet more vile than this. Because when the Holy Ghost gets to moving, I get to dancing. If the Holy Ghost says speak in tongues, you better speak in tongues. If the Holy Ghost says prophesy, then prophesy. If the Holy Ghost says roll on the floor, then roll on the floor. If the Holy Ghost says lift your hands, then lift the hands. Because remember, they're not your hands. If the Holy Ghost says play the keyboard, then play the keyboard. If the Holy Ghost says play the guitar, then play, you might say, I don't know how to play. Again, the Spirit itself will make intercession and teach you how to play the guitar. The Holy Ghost says sing, then sing. You say, I don't even know. I'm not a good singer. The Holy Ghost will take dominion, the Mashanda, and He will begin to sing through you, and dance through you, and play through you, and all of my worship, and all of my praise. The Bible says that the prayers of the saints go up into heaven, carried by the angels. Let's put the angels to work. Let's put angels to work. We don't want any unemployed angels. Let's make them busy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, everybody. All my worship, come on. Let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you. Flow to you. All my worship, my worship, my worship, my worship. My words and my words and my words and I don't know what you came in this video with, but shake it off. You came in depressed, shake it off in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Paul was sitting next to the fire and a viper came out of the fire and it bit Paul. And the Bible says he shook it off in the fire. And they were watching him because they knew it was a venomous viper. And he did not get sick because Jesus had already prophesied about that very day. I don't know what you came in here with in terms of sickness, disease, debt, 
student loans, medical debt, hallelujah, issues in the marriage, issues in the family, but shake it off in the Holy Ghost fire. Shake it off in the Holy Ghost fire. Say it on my worship. Let all my worship, all my praise flow to you, flow to you. All my worship, all of my worship, yes, glory be. The Holy Ghost is going to have his way. No devil in hell can stop the Jesus in me. I don't have power. You don't have power. The devil doesn't have power. But Jesus said of himself, he said, all power. In heaven and earth is in my hands. What do you need from the Lord? What do you request? He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And the understanding is this, something good. Everyone that seeketh shall find something good. Hallelujah. And there is none good but God. All of my worship, yes. All of my praise flows to you. There's a mighty river flowing. Hallelujah. I feel something pushing me. I feel my help coming. The anointing of God is moving on these two chords. Hallelujah. You want to play along? You put me through your mixer? Come on. I'm on D major. I'm on G major. Glory be. Let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock. All of my worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my worship. Let's soak in the glory right there. The old saints used to say it like this. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Glory be. God's going to get the glory. If I got to sing this song for three hours until the, something breaks in the atmosphere. If I got to speak in tongues for seven days straight, something. If I got to fast for 40 days, something's getting ready to break in the atmosphere. God wants to do a miracle. And he's looking for humility. Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. God said to Moses, He said, I'm gonna I'll wipe them out. I'll just take them all out. Moses said, Don't do it. And he am I pleading with God, interceding my car. Abraham said, If I found favor in your sight, how do I tell Abraham what I go to do? Hannah prayed for a child. Oh my God, Shanda. Eli said, why are you around the temple drunk? Honda, you look like you're drunk. You shouldn't come around here like that. What you do? She said, I'm not drunk, I'm praying. Glory be to God. What you praying for? I'm praying for a son. Glory be, I'm praying for a child, a baby. He said, go, go. He said, go. The Lord's going to do it. It's already done in the spirit. And the things that are seen are a manifestation of the things that are unseen. It's already done in the spirit realm. And truly she had a baby. And the baby's name was Samuel. We even say Prophet Samuel. Kona, my mighty man of God. A man of renown by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you're praying, you might look like you're drunk. My God, but you're pleading. Sometimes the Lord will just, he's just moving you. He told my son, he's looking for humility. Oh my God, he might roll you on the floor. Oh my worship, glory be. The Lord will have you speak in tongues. I don't want English right now. Humble yourself and speak in tongues. Glory be to God. I don't want German right now. I don't want French right now. I don't want Espanol right now. I don't want Zulu right now or African. I don't want Farsi right now. He said, I want you to speak in tongues right now. 
as a sign of humility right now. Glory be. The Lord might get to moving on you saying, I want the Lord say, the Lord might just bring a spirit on you and you just cry. My God, just cry. He wants humility. You say, I don't want to cry. The Lord, just cry. My God, you can't fight against God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Lord might have you lay prostrate. You say, I don't want to get on the floor. It's dirty. The Lord, I put you on the floor. My God, you're too cocky. You're too arrogant. My God, you're too cocky. The Lord, I put you on the floor. My God, in the name. You done got too full of yourself. And the Lord, I put you on the floor and lay you on your belly. And he'll put you on your face. My God, in the name. Glory. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Even with Reese House. Oh, glory. The Lord told him to pray with his hands up in the air. All night. All night he was praying with his hands up in the air. Glory be to God. Hours after hours praying with his hands up in the air. Glory be to God. And I'm ashamed of the That's how the Lord might do you. I'm a kaya de lebo shanda baka. Jesus, Jesus. I'm not a lobo. See the Lord to tell you to lift your hands. I didn't ask you to do some hard thing, the Lord. My God, in the name. If I didn't ask you to give me a million dollars, I said lift your hands in the air. That's what the Lord will have you do. He'll have you do something simple, and in your flesh, you don't want to do it. Glory be. Remember the man that came to the prophet, and he was, he was, he was leprous. Kornabashan, the Father, show yourself. Glory be. He was the captain, I believe, of the Syrian army, the Syrian host. Glory be to God. And the prophet said, go dip, go baptize yourself, basically. I, in, I believe it was seven times. Kornabashi, let's look it up. And he didn't want to do it. Let all my worship. I'll type in Syrian and see. All of my praise flows to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It, this is not a show. I could not see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stay prayerful. Thank you, Jesus. Here we are in 2 Kings. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be. Yeah, here we is, El Elisha. Second Kings. Stay prayerful. This is a prayer meeting. It's a prayer meeting with the microphone. It's a prayer meeting with the keyboard. It's a prayer meeting with the MacBook Air. It's a prayer meeting with the iPhone 12. Holly, but it's still a prayer meeting. Second Kings chapter 5. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. That's a sickness, a disease. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. You see what God is doing there? Getting somebody close to him. It says from Israel. That's why God has you on that job. That's why God has you in that school. That's why God has you attending a church that you would, you don't want to attend that church, but God has you there for a time, for a season. And had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid. Thank you. Give me a little more on the drums. Thank you, Jesus. And she waited on Naaman's wife, even got her close, you see, Glory be. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. It's not the maid. You see what God will do? It wasn't even the mistress that said it. It was somebody else that heard. Now we got three people. Come on. 
this God is working here. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, oh, now there's a man involved, told his Lord. And the king of Syria said, go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. So that tells us that Samaria used to be a part of Israel. You see in the New Testament, they were upset at the Samaritan. Uh, the Samaritan, remember Jesus? It talked about the good Samaritan. But here, Elisha was of Samaria. Okay, so we're learning history. Come on, we're learning about division and divisiveness in the spirit. Come on. And the king of Syria said, go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold. That'd be a lot today. And 10 changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you. I, there's so much here. It says from in the letter, it says, I have therewith sent name and my servant to thee. Okay, watch this. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent. God, show yourself. Basically, Naaman was so proud that he made it as if the letter <laughs> was coming from somebody else. You, Somebody send a message to somebody to get to you because they don't want to actually communicate with you because if you turn them down, come on, come on, God, move me on. They want to say, well, I never really talked to you in the first place, but they, they did, but they sent it through somebody else because they try to make it as if. Glory be to God. And on my worship. You see, Father, show yourself. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Naaman did not come himself, but he sent somebody else. But he's the one that wants to be healed. Come on, man of God. Shot, Father, show yourself. I'm not explaining it the way. God, show yourself. If you want to be healed, say, God, heal me in the name of Jesus. This pastor and that church, great. If you want to be healed, pray for yourself and say, in the name of Jesus. Will you pray for my son? Will you pray for my daughter? You pray for him. Glory be. Glory be. Relationship versus religion. Father, show yourself. Because I'll be here. Father, show yourself. I wasn't explaining that good enough. That was not. It was getting all. So for, for the Lord said, no, no, no. You, no, no. You need to back up. The letter came from Naaman. Glory be to God. But the letter came from somebody else by way of Naaman. <laughs> and so as we move on in the story, what we're seeing is the man is prideful. And so let's go all the way back to where we talked about leprosy. I wasn't explaining it right. And the Lord said, you need to back up. You ain't explaining it right. You're, you're wrong. Okay, sorry, I was wrong. The letter did come from Naaman. But it came from Naaman, uh, and he sent a servant. Because it says, Naaman, my servant to thee. That's why, I'm, that's why we read the Bible, because preachers get all messed up. And they're like, that ain't even in the Bible. That's, ben that's, Almer that's the farmer's almanac. Quoting stuff, it ain't even in the... I've, there's been a lot of stuff that I've realized that that's not even in the Bible. No wonder the doctrines are... They, well, folks are being baptized in some Catholic way. Because that stuff, that ain't even in the... Folks don't even read the Bible for them... You do know the Catholics tell the people don't, to re don't read the Bible. Why don't they want them to read the Bible? Because if they read the Bible, they're going to learn the truth and be like, what? What have we been doing all these years? Uh, yeah. You read the Bible for yourself. You done spent 57 hours on Facebook. You can't read the Bible for a couple seconds? Glory be to God. You done went to 52,000 church services. You can't pray? Glory be to God. Pray for yourself, it's free. 
You don't have to put any money in any place. Unless the Lord, if the Lord says give, give. But you know you can pray for yourself and for free. Glory be to God. So Naaman sent a letter, but he sent a letter by his servant. Glory be to God. If he would if he would have came humble to the king of Israel, you know, submissive, but he was too proud. Naaman's not even the king of Syria. Let's go all the way back. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria. Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria. Naaman is not even the king of Syria. But he's so close with the king of Syria that the, let's go here. God help me, Jesus. I didn't know I was gonna go here. So that's why I'm kind of looking. This is what we do. This is what we do. And the king of Syria said, go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. Oh, okay, wow, I didn't even realize. Naaman is over the military. He's not the king. Naaman didn't even know that Elisha existed on earth. The slave from Israel told Naaman's wife, God help us. You see how many people are involved in this? What's the point, man of God? The point is this. Pray for yourself. Lay hands on yourself. If your wife is sick, pray for her. I'm all getting messed up in the story because I'm looking at how many people are involved? I'm all like, Naaman, the king of Syria, the mistress, the wife. Somebody told Naaman what he heard, overheard a conversation. What in the... God help us, Jesus. How many people, I, I'm only at verse seven and there's like, I don't know how many people are involved. Naaman. The, the little maid from Israel, Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, what kind? then there's one that went and told Naaman, that's four. Then he got, they got the king of Syria, Syria involved, that's five. Now a letter went to the king of Israel, that's six. But it's all trying to get a letter to, to Elisha, which that's what, six, seven people? I haven't even got to verse seven yet. What's the point, man of God? The point is this, pray. You don't need five, six, seven people involved because they're unbelievers. This is what God is doing to show his glory even though through those who are idol worshipers. But if you are a believer, Listen, my father's a pastor. My mother is a pastor. My father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my grandfathers and my, my great-grandfathers and my great-great-grandfathers. And But you know what? I'm not going to heaven based on their relationship with Jesus. I have to pray to Jesus for myself. I have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. My, I have to be filled with the Holy Ghost myself. I have to pray and fast and study the word. Glory be to God. It's a whole lot of people involved for prayer. This is all trying to get to a man to pray for another man. All these people have to be involved for one person to pray for another. You could pray. Now they're heathens. They're or what we would call heathens in the Bible. Sorry, but that's what they would be called in the Bible. They're idolatrous, idol worshipers. So it takes all these people. But for the people of God, listen. You know to pray, so pray. You know to fast, so fast. You know to study the Bible, so study the Bible. You don't need to go to 28 different people. Will you pray for me? Will you do this? Will you do that? Pray to God for yourself. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. No wonder I got all turned around in the story because I, was, I didn't realize how many people were involved. <laughs> Somebody said, well, I, I'm the one that said it. There's a difference between holiness and foolishness. I heard somebody that's Southern, it's a, it's a bit Southern, say, I don't fool with no foolishness. I don't fool with no foolishness now. Pray to God directly by the Holy Ghost. Jude 1 and 20, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That means praying to God direct. God is using you to pray to himself. It says the Spirit itself maketh intercession. 
Father, help me, Jesus. That's why we have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says in the book of Exodus, when I see the blood, I will pass over. In other words, the only way to get the name of Jesus on us, well, first we got to be sanctified and consecrated. The only way to get the name of Jesus on us is by being baptized in the name of Jesus. Because the bride takes on the name of the bridegroom, and Jesus is the bridegroom, and we represent the bride, the body of Christ. Let up my worship. You didn't know this was going to be a Bible study, but everything in the body of Christ should be teaching. It says, go therefore and teach and baptize them in the name of Jesus. That's who the Father is, Jesus. That's who the Son is, Jesus. That the Bible says there is but one Lord. Glory if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? It says, Mary was with child of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. So it says in John chapter 3 and verse 5, and we're going to get back to 2 Kings verse five, or chapter 5. John chapter 3 and verse 5, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Remember, nothing can ascend unless something has first descended. How can I get into the kingdom of God? You ain't getting there without the Holy Spirit. You can't take a Boeing 747 to heaven. You can't drive to heaven. You might be able to drive to Milwaukee, but you can't drive to heaven. You might be able to fly to Israel, but you can't fly to heaven because heaven is a spiritual place for spiritual people. Glory be. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. Now you can go to hell without being born of the water and of the spirit of Christ, but you can't go to heaven. So he says, except you, he said, marvel not, ye must be born again. Father, show yourself. So how can so one said, what must I do to be saved in the book of Acts? What must I do to be saved? Remember the prison warden when Paul and Silas, and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed, and the prison was shaken. Even the prisoners were on one accord with them when they were praying and singing. And there was an earthquake, and he came in, the warden came in and said, what must I do to be saved? Why did he say that? Why was he so moved? Because, God help me Jesus, we're gonna teach a little bit of history. Because if a Roman centurion or a Roman guard lost a, 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 a prisoner, they, if they could not find that prisoner, they either had to kill the prisoners that, or they had to kill themselves as a matter of honor. Remember when Paul was shipwrecked and, he's, and Paul said, don't hurt anybody because they thought, well, if we lose a prisoner, we're going to get killed. Hallelujah. That's why, remember Pilate? They said, if anybody doesn't do this thing, uh, they're no friend to Caesar. They were, try they were trying to threaten him that we're going to have you killed. Because if Caesar finds out of this, this uproar, and we're going to make an uproar, then we know Caesar will have you killed. That's why he said, ah, what do I do? And he, Jesus had to counsel Pilate so that he, so that he could be crucified. That's why he tried to bring Herod into it so that he could use Herod as an excuse. So if Herod said, don't crucify him, then he could say, well, the king of Israel said not to crucify him. But that didn't work because Jesus was the king of Israel and Herod was a fraud. That's why bringing Herod into it, it says the, the kings of the earth have counseled together against God. God shall laugh, he'll have them in derision. Herod actually has no authority. He's not really the king of Israel. It's something called, we would call him a puppet, a puppet king or a puppet regime. God, get me out of here. Glory be to God. I don't, I don't know if I have the time. God in the name of, if you can't get excited off the word, the preacher used to say, if you can't get excited off the word, I can't help you. I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about the word of God. All my worship, all my praise flows to you. We love to pray and play and sing and dance and study the Bible. Oh, thank you. All day singing psalms and spiritual hymns, admonishing one another, grace in our hearts to the Lord, spirit of joy, spirit of laughter, spirit of praise, spirit of peace. We love the Lord. Hallelujah. The body of Christ, we're all excited about Jesus. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Glory be to God. You should be dancing. 
Glory, Jesus died on the cross, came back to life. Now, now I was in John 3 and 5, except a man be born of the water of the, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. I got it. Jesus said it like this, marvel not, ye must be born again. Well, how can that happen? Well, here it is. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now what? we got to where the man said, what must I do to be saved? Because he was astounded that the prisoners would not leave even though the prison doors were open. The reason why they didn't leave is because they couldn't leave because God was in the thing. And they recognized the supernatural. Where are you gonna run to? When you recognize the supernatural, where are you gonna run to? Cleveland? <laughs> if there's angels involved, if God is involved, where are you gonna run to from an angel? Where are you gonna run to from the Spirit of God? Glory be to God. David said, said it like this, where, where can I go from the presence of the Lord? I don't know if it was David, I might have to look that up. But one said, I'll correct it. There was one that said, where can I go from the presence of the Lord? David talked about if I make my bed in hell, you might have to double check that for me. <laughs> I know it's in there, but I don't always, I don't want to leave this scripture here. I need about three or four Bibles with me. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. Here's what Jesus said. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Glory be to God. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how the man said, what must I do to be saved? And that's what they did. They baptized him and his whole house in the name of Jesus. They did the same thing with Cornelius, who was a centurion of the Italian band, a devout man. I mean, very serious, very serious about uh, the things of God. And he prayed to God always. And the God he prayed to was the God of Israel, even though he was Italian, of the Italian band. But he prayed to the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Glory be. I'm excited about Jesus. Kornabasi. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes, that means he tore his clothes, and said, am I God <laughs> to kill and to make alive that this man doth sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? God help me, Jesus. If you're still watching, God help me, Jesus. Father, show yourself. I used to attend churches, not always because I wanted to. My, I told you my father's a pastor. And folks would come to the churches to, to stare at me. And I felt like this man, am I God? <laughs> folks would come to the church to hear me play. I'm like, you don't have anything else to do? I'm the, I'm it. But here's what God taught me. And here's what I'm gonna teach you by the, word, by the Spirit of God. The reason why people are staring at you the reason why people want to meet you, the reason why it says all that live godly must suffer persecution. Persecute doesn't mean to kill. Persecute doesn't mean to torture. Persecute means to annoy. God help me, Jesus. How you doing? How you doing? God bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus. But why are they annoying me? Because they've never seen anybody like you before. It's not, it's not necessarily maybe what you look like, but it's, it's the anointing of God. So they're thinking it's something like how you look or your hair or something like your skin complexion. But it's actually the anointing. What does anointing mean? Anointing means to be separate. It, it's not that, it's the first time you ever heard anybody play the Hammond organ? I mean, that's my... The first time you ever heard anybody play the drums? Hey, you know what, I don't know, maybe it was. So us as pastor's kids, we get annoyed because we're being forced to come to church and then people sitting there just making our life difficult. We don't even wanna be, but God taught me, it's the anointing. Glory be to God. That's why they're, they're bullying you because of the anointing. They're not, they don't really hate you. They're not really attracted to you. They're attracted to the anointing of God and they don't know how to. Glory be to God. So what do I need to do? You need to pray for them. Pray for them, they're the one annoying me. He said, love them that hate you. Bless them that curse you and do good to them that uh, and despitefully use you and persecute you. 
Glory be to God. Father, show yourself. This is going to help somebody. You, 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 you recognize how I'm kind of like, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. This is going to help somebody. Glory be to God. I couldn't really sing the song like I wanted to sing it. I can't really play like I want to play. But God is saying, listen, this is going to help somebody. And, and then the, here's, the, here's the point. And it has to be God because me and my flesh feel like, man, I ain't really playing this song like I, I'm, 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 I keep feeling like I'm getting off beat. But God said, record. Glory out of Oshanda. I'm like, I can't sing like I know I can sing. God said, record. And you're going to know when the Spirit of God moves that it's not based on your own ability or intellect or athleticism or your acad- uh, academia. It's not based on your own understanding. The Bible says the, the things of God are foolishness. The people think they think they're wise and they can't understand the things of God, but he's revealed them unto babes. Jesus God, let all my worship. This is gonna help somebody receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. In order to be born again, we have to be born of the water and of the spirit. So that's why it says in Acts 2.38, it also says it in Acts 19, 4 and 5, we have to be baptized full submersion in the water in the name of Jesus. The water represents, a, going down in the water represents a death, a burial, and a resurrection. As Jesus also died, he was buried and he was resurrected. Akayede, the name Yeshua means, or Jesus means, he shall save his people from their sins. And, and again, there is none of the name given under heaven whereby we must be, men must be saved. Glory be to God. If it's not teaching on salvation, it's not of God. I don't need to just hear another song I have heard. I'm going to let you in on something. A lot of times the folks that sing secular music are more talented. So if we're going to try to go toe-to-toe with the world on music, the church going to lose. Why? Because they go all the way over. If you're trying to go toe-to-toe with the world on singing, you probably going to lose because they go all the way over. And a lot of people that call themselves the people of God, they don't go all the way over into the Holy Ghost because they want to be cute. And when God says speaking in tongues, they try to stop, they try to hold back the Holy Ghost. When God says roll on the floor, they don't want to roll on the floor. When God says give some money, they don't want to give any money. When God says pray all night, they don't want to pray. Instead, they want to be on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and trying to replace the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ with religion. They want to give God an hour on Sunday and you're not giving God an hour on Sunday. That's you and your own vanity trying to come up with your own path to heaven. Glory be to God. We don't go toe to toe with the world. They'll give over to that evil spirit. They'll be dancing like you ain't seen dancing. But the only way that we have any power as the people of God is by way of the power of the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost gets to moving, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. We're trying to, people are trying to figure out, how can I have the Holy Spirit without the tongues? How can I move in the Spirit, but I want to be a prophet, but I want to be a pastor, but I don't want to pray, but I don't want to dance. And, the, and Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. I'm trying to figure out how can I go to heaven, but I don't like the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to pray, I don't want to fast, I don't want to study the Bible, but I want to figure out how can I get to heaven. Glory be. There ain't no way to get to heaven without prayer and fasting. Our parents used to use this word a lot. Lazy. Ian Bounds said it like this, we have grossly underestimated the amount of communion with God that is necessary. The word prayer means request, beseech, entreat. The Bible says in the book of Job that Satan basically had to request of God to hurt Job, to kill his family. Satan is putting forth for Christ. Remember in the Bible where Jesus cast the, the devils out of the man where the demon sent legion, for we are many. And they asked, they said, 
Could you let us go into the, they didn't want to go to hell. They were just being able to hang out on the earth, using people as a host. And they didn't want to go to hell. So they said, can we go off into those pigs? That's a, that's a request. The evil spirits prayed to Jesus and asked him something. Satan had to pray to God and ask him if he could hurt Job. Come on. And here's what's going on. All day, every day, Satan and demons are praying to God and asking him if they can do evil things. And the body of Christ has power from God by way of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but we have to, here it is, Jude chapter 1 and verse 20, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. But if we don't pray in the Holy Ghost, we don't have the power. And the devil beating the living daylights out of us because we won't pray and fast. Because we're lazy. And because we desire the things of the world over the things of God. Because we've become desensitized to the Spirit of God. And the only way to be close with God is to pray by using the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. It says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Let all my worship. God wants to pray through us because God wants communion. He says in the book of Revelations, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone would open up unto me, I'll come in, we'll dine and sup. He wants intimacy. He wants communion. He says, the Bible says he does not desire the blood of these goats and bullocks, these sacrifices, but those of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. In other words, those who said, Jesus, I show yourself, I love you. Just, he said, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. God wants communion, but he wants communion and he requires communion of those who are sanctified. Sanctified means to be separate and he wants us to be separate from our sins. In order to be separate from our sins, we have to be baptized in the blood. The blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Shall be saved. It doesn't say that you are saved right then, but you shall be. Because the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. So when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're gonna be, con by force means, violent take it by force means, I want everything that has to do with God. I want. I'm learning, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm learning, I'm praying, God show me, God show me, God show me. And then I get to Acts 2.38, and then I get to Acts 19.4 and 5, and then I'm reading all through Corinthians, and I'm reading. There is no way to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be able to skip over baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no way to study the Holy Spirit and not receive the Holy Spirit. On, in, on Bonnie Bray in Los Angeles, they were reading the book of Acts, and the woman, Jenny Moore, starts speaking in tongues. Remember at Cornelius' house, Peter was simply talking about Jesus. And he was talking about how the Holy Spirit moved on the disciples. And Cornelius and his whole household start speaking in tongues. And Peter said, can anybody forbid baptism? And they baptized them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You keep going west, you're going to get west. You keep going east, you're going to get east. You keep going north, you're going to get north. If you keep going towards Jesus, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're going to get to Acts chapter 2. The whole Bible testifies of Jesus. The whole Bible is about repentance. The whole Bible is about communion by way of prayer. Intimacy, intimacy, that's what the Lord wants but we have to be separate from our sins. The Bible says they can't hear my voice because they hear the voice of their father, the devil. He says, my sheep hear my voice. How do we hear the voice of God? By the spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Jesus is God. Jesus is the father. Jesus is the son. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. He said, I am my father are one. Whom do men say that I, the son of man am? It says Mary was with child of the Holy Ghost testifying Jesus 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 he wants prayer 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 but he wants prayer from those and he receives prayer from those communion from the again remember the hours come for the true worshiper but in order to worship you must worship in spirit and in truth the only way to worship in spirit and in truth he says I am the way the truth and the life 
I cannot worship in spirit and in truth without the truth. He said, if you try to come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. You can't go around Jesus trying to figure out how can I get to heaven without being baptized in the name of Jesus? You can't. Thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall. There is none other name given under heaven whereby we must. How can I get to heaven without praying? You can't. Prayer is communion with God. The reason why people go to heaven is because they're communing with God until they eventually get to where God lives and resides in heaven. Oh, God is omniscient and he's omnipresent and he's omnipotent. But his throne is in heaven. And the only way I can ascend into the holies is by way of the Holy Spirit. Angels are descending and ascending. They're not going sideways. <laughs> the angels are descending and ascending. In order for me to go up, I've got to have that Jesus went up. The disciples were looking up. The Bible says, Elijah went up, chariots, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha was looking up at Elijah as he went. The disciples were looking up at Jesus as he went. He went up. He didn't go sideways. He didn't go backwards. He didn't go down. I will not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. They did not put Jesus in the ground. They put him in a tomb. He was buried in the tomb. They called that buried. When we, when we say buried, we mean in the ground. But when they say buried, they meant in the tomb. Jesus went up. The angel said, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing? In like manner, you're going to go up too. When Jesus comes, he's going to come and get you. It's called the second coming. In order to go up, you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Why? So that your sins, it says, for the remission of sins. That means the payment, the atonement, the cleansing of sin away from you. He said, what if I sin again? You, say, you, you pray and ask God to forgive you. The Bible says he's just and faithful to forgive. All of my worship. Uh, God, help us, Jesus. Father, show yourself. Hallelujah. Because it's all about communion. Many of us figured out religion. We figured out how to get paid to go to church. Paid to preach. Paid to lead work, lead the whatever they call them, praise teams. Paid to play the keyboard. Paid to play the drums. Paid to play the guitar. We don't figured out church so much. We got figured. We figured out how to get money from going to church, but we didn't figure out how to pray and fast and study the Bible and be holy and righteous. We still a wash in sin. Shanda, you got a relationship with the church. Obviously, you must have a relationship with the pastor or the administrator. But do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because a relationship with a pastor of a church ain't going to do nothing in terms of going to heaven. His name might be Pastor Bob. Well, hey, you got a relationship with Pastor Bob. But does Pastor Bob have a heaven or a hell to put you in? You better get a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, God bless us with conviction to repentance. Baptize us in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Pastor Bob. Baptize us in the Holy Ghost. He said, shall indeed baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's the Holy Ghost fire. And the evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit, the Bible says they spake with tongues. It was a prophetic. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. The confirmation that you've received the Holy Spirit is speaking in languages that you don't know. That's the confirmation. It says signs follow them that believe. And the prophetic... They shall speak with new tongues. And the sign is you speaking in those tongues that you don't know of your own intellect. It's the supernatural otherworldly power of God. Father, show yourself. Then it says building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. God is praying through me to himself. It says we speak in tongues of angels and of men. All my worship. 
All of my praise flows to you. Thank you, Jesus. The only way my praise flows to you is by the Holy Ghost. The only way my worship is true worship is by the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, my righteousness is as filthy rags. In other words, I don't have any righteousness. There is none good but God. With men, it is impossible. What's impossible? It's not impossible to be evil, but it's impossible to be holy without the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. So it says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people which are called by my name, what's his name? Shall humble themselves and pray. I'm not disparaging, but it doesn't say humble themselves and go to, to a synagogue. It doesn't say humble themselves and go to a mosque. It doesn't say humble themselves and go to a church. It doesn't say humble themselves and go to a kingdom hall, Jehovah Witness. It doesn't say humble themselves and go to a Mormon temple. It doesn't say, it says humble themselves and pray. Because when you're doing those things, you're not, that's not humility, that's vanity. Doing something that you want to do, how is that humble yourself? I humbled myself and ate pizza. You wanted to eat that pizza. How's that humility? You find a church where the pastor is funny. You find a church where you get paid to play. You find a church that you like the location. You find a church that smells good, looks good. It's in the neighborhood I like. And then turn around and say, it's humility. It ain't no, that what? That's called vanity. If God told you to do it, that's holy. But if, you're, if we do it of ourselves, that's vanity. He says, humble yourselves and pray because I know you don't want to. The flesh, it says, the things of the spirit are foolishness unto the natural man because the things of the spirit have to be spiritually discerned. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In other words, the flesh doesn't have anything to do with God of itself, even though it was created by God. All have sinned and come short of the glory. The flesh of itself does not want to have anything to do with, it doesn't have anything to do with God. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The spirit of your spirit is why you're still watching now. Because God has brought you here. Because he said, that is my son, that is my boy right there. And he's going to teach on the Godhead. What does that mean? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all are Jesus. He's going to teach on the plan of salvation. What is that? Acts 2, 38, Acts 19, 4, and 5. How can we get to heaven? That's the plan of salvation. Monotheism. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord our God is one. Glory be to God. The Godhead. What that means is Jesus manifests himself in the different forms. He, it, God manifests himself as Jesus. He can manifest himself and appear to be an angel. He can manifest himself as the Holy Spirit. He can manifest himself however he wants to. The Godhead meaning all three are one. He said, I could have the preacher sit down to a keyboard if I want to. I could have the pre preacher stand up and play the guitar if I want to. He does whatever he wants to do. He said, is it not mine to do what I will with what's mine? Peter looked at John and said, what of this man? When Jesus prophesied to him that he was going to be crucified. And he said, we, he, got, he got a little attitude and said, what of this man? Referring to John. And Jesus said, what is it to thee if he shall never taste of death? I said, follow me. Follow thou me. Well, they've got a million views. Well, they've got a big church. Well, they've got a small church. Well, they're doing this. And they're doing, Jesus said, follow me. Don't look at them. He said, the kingdom of God is over here. The king, they're having a revival over there. Jesus said, don't go. The kingdom of God is within you. When thou prayest, enter into thy closet, not your neighbor's closet. When you get in the closet, yeah, pray for your neighbor. But not in your neighbor's closet. When thou pray, he didn't say go in the pastor's closet. He said, go in your own closet and shut the door. Glory be to God. We done got up into some other people's closet and they done got up in our closet. Kick them out the closet and get out of their closet. My God, that's that man's ministry. Paul said, lest I trample another man's work. We out the box today. I ain't taking up no offering up in here. This is the prayer room. This is spiritual warfare. Glory be to God. Neither do I take up offerings. 
this for money. I get money by way of a job working. Glory be. If God tells somebody to ask for money, okay. But if you're doing it of your own volition, it's of the devil. Kanabasi. The Lord told me, go and minister. Go on YouTube and minister. Go on PrayToJesus.org and minister. Glory be to God. If they make a billion dollars preaching, God help them, Jesus. If the Lord said to do it, do it. I'm sorry I don't have any books out. I don't have anything on iTunes that I know of. <laughs> huh? I don't have a church for you to come to. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't take up offerings. I, I'm imploring you to be baptized in the name of Jesus, full submersion in the water. I'm imploring you to pray and to ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you have not spoken in tongues by the Spirit of God, say, God, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, anything he asks the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Say, God, in the name of Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost. All of my praise flows to you. Jesus, Jesus. Prayer has to do with God because God has to do with prayer. It's all about praying to Jesus. That's why the Lord gave us is at PrayToJesus.org, PrayToJesus.co.uk, WilliamSeymour.org, AzusaStreet.life, AzusaStreet.today, AndrewUrshan.org, GTHaywood.org, Garfield Haywood. All these people have to do with prayer. That's why God said there, there, there's your domain names right there. Glory be. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. And when you use the name of Jesus, you don't try to make money off the name of Jesus as if Jesus is a whore, as if the Holy Ghost is a prostitute. You trying to pimp out the Holy Ghost. You don't use the gifts of God to make money. If God says to receive some um, donation or something, then you do it because God said to do it. But you don't do it of your own volition. My God, we do the things of God because he said, freely ye have received, freely ye give. I've not come to be ministered to, I've come to minister. God, get me out of here. If the Lord has blessed you to play the piano, sit your behind down and play the piano. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Not for money. If God allows somebody to give you some money and he tells you, go ahead and receive it. Hallelujah, we don't want to block their blessing. If God said to do it, then you do it. You receive the money and you say, God bless you in the name of Jesus. But you don't do it for money. You don't preach for money. You don't play the piano for money. We're not prostitutes. You don't prostitute the anointing. God, get me out of here. Glory be to God. This thing, I didn't, I didn't God, and I feel like the old preachers. I didn't plan to go here. I did not plan to go here. Jesus, God. And we're not disparaging church. Folks they ain't generally baptized at the Burger King. I don't know if you have that in your nation. Folks aren't generally baptized at a restaurant, so we're not disparaging church. If God says to go, but when God says to leave, stand up and walk out and don't come back unless the, if God says to leave. You say, how do I know the voice of God? You gotta pray. If the Lord says pastor that church for 30 years and you pastor the church for 30 years. But if the Lord says to resign, resign. But I'm getting a bunch of money and there's a Mercedes and you better resign when the Lord says to resign. Lest I trample another man's work. Lest I be found to be in sin. The penalty of sin is death and that word right there in the Bible means corrupt hell. If God says to go, then you go because God said obedience is worship and worship is obedience. He said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. But you done got your picture up on the wall. You done got yourself on the New York Times bestseller list. You done all together let the devil turn you out. Or you done turned yourself out. Glory be to God. Jesus God. By your own vanity. I understand it. I understand it. Because it's hard to let something go. It's hard for people to let something go. Once you're the worship leader, you don't want anybody else to be the worship leader. Once you're up there playing the guitar, you don't want anybody else to... 
once you're getting paid. We, listen, we done fought over $100. Imagine somebody making $100,000 a year to sing some worship songs and then, you think they're gonna give that up? The Holy Ghost gonna have to intercede to get them out of Imagine, imagine men and women of God, they won't give up the church over $2. They ain't giving it up over millions. God's gonna have to intercede and you know what, he will. There is nothing hid that will not be revealed. We've seen some situations and some pastors have said, you'll take this church over my dead body and they surely did. God will let situations fall apart because he says, I'm done with that man as the pastor. And if he don't walk away, he's gonna be rant, he's gonna be taken out. If the Lord tells you to move on from leading worship somewhere, whatever, it's not really leading worship. It's really, that's just what they call it. Because the only true worship leader is Jesus. Shanda. But when God says to move on, you better move on. Because I don't want to be sitting there still. I want to do it. But I want to, this is my stage. I own this stage. I run this stage. I run this church. Okay. When you mess around and end up with cancer, marriage falling apart, family falling apart, some scandal, it didn't have to be that way. I mean, Providence, apparently it did. But when God says move, and when God says move on from that job, when God says move on from that school, when God says move on from that relationship, and that's not your wife, that's not your husband, you better move on. The Bible says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cling to his own wife and the two shall. The Bible says, if you don't hate your own spouse and son and daughter for my sake, you're none of me. In other words, it doesn't mean malice. It means that God is first. You might be having a conversation with your spouse and the Holy Ghost will say, start praying. And they look at, are you really going to interrupt me? The Holy Ghost said to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. God is first. Father, show yourself. Hallelujah. Now let me lay, Father, please forgive me of all my sins. They are my sins and no one else's that thou mightest judge correctly. Please forgive me. Please deliver me of anything untoward. I, I'm trying to, Father, I, 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 glory be to God. I pray that you would work, work through this video, work through this audio, work through this YouTube channel, work on PrayToJesus.org. I, I can't minister your gospel. You're going to have to minister your own gospel using me as a vessel. Clean me out and deliver me of myself. Not I, but Christ. Now, Father, if I have found favor in thy sight, as Abraham interceded for Lot, when you said, do I tell Abraham what I go to do? And you were going to burn Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, and you allowed Abraham to be an intercessor. Again, you allowed Moses to be an intercessor. When you said, I'll take the people out. And Moses said, please don't. You said you would bring us out of Egypt into the promised land. Now all these people and all these heathens, uh, we've told them they know about the, the prophecy. So please, Father, and, and stay to your own word. And of course, God was never going to take him out, but he was just challenging Moses to be an intercessor. In spite of the people's behavior, and God is going to have you pray for people you don't like. Because he said, forgive. The only way for us to be perfect is to forgive. He said, if you don't forgive, I'm to your heavenly father. You're blocking. God help us, Jesus. That you may be perfect. Again, love them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them who uh, persecute you and despitefully use you. I'm missing something there. God, help me, Jesus. If you know the scripture, you say it right now. You say the scripture, and I'll wait for you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Glory be to God. In order to be perfect, we have to forgive. Not only do we have to forgive, but we have to pray for the one. The disciples said it like this, Father, Stephen was being stoned and he said, Father, forgive them. Jesus was interceding on the cross, on the cross, and he was still ministering. He said, I've not come to be ministered to, I've come to minister. Freely ye have received, freely ye give. 
Horaba Shandabaka Quarianebesi. It's not my assignment to minister the gospel to a climax and then take up an offering. It's my assignment to bless the Lord at all times. And the Lord said, go therefore and teach. And what should I teach? Teach on salvation. There's nothing more important than salvation. And there's no way to get to heaven without the Holy Ghost. Then once you receive it, you're going to have to pray to receive it. And you're going to have to pray to keep it. Glory be to God. It said, this kind cometh forth not out but by prayer and fasting. And you better believe it won't stay out unless there's prayer and fasting. Because the Bible says, because a demon might turn around and try to come back into the place. You fall, you find yourself altogether given over to some addiction from six years ago. What happened? You got to continue to pray and fast. You have to continue to study the word. You have to be baptized in the name of Jesus and speaking in tongues for the first time. That's not the graduation. That's the initiation. Then you have to, it says, building up, praying in the Holy Ghost. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. It says men ought always to pray. It says pray without ceasing. It says open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. In other words, present continual, present continual with the praise, present continual with the worship, present continual with the singing the spiritual hymn, present and continual with the praying, present and continual dancing before the Lord, present and continual studying the Bible, that we would be in communion with him all the way, all the way, all the way until we're in heaven. All of my worship. Here's your homework. Read 2 Kings chapter 5. We got, we got all the way to verse 7. Well, let's look. look well, do you, have, do you have any more time? You know, you can always come back to the video. So it says, And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes, and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elijah the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. In other words, thou might have the, you might have a strong military, but you don't have any power. This is all a power move. Remember the book of Exodus. Pharaoh has a military. Pharaoh has wealth. Pharaoh has gold. Pharaoh has slaves. But he didn't, but God was doing all these things to make Pharaoh look like a fool. The fool have said in his heart that there is no God. Pharaoh thought he was God. And the people could see clearly, Pharaoh doesn't have any power. Exactly. Only God has power. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob defend me. This is a power move. Samaria is supposed to be some, or Syria is supposed to be some great power. Egypt is supposed to be some great power. The Philistines are supposed to have this great military. And they're all together looking like a joke because God is allowing them to think that they have power, but truly only God has power. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him. You see this, what God is doing? You, can, you sent a letter, okay. So I said, I'm not gonna talk to you directly. I'll send a messenger to you like you sent a messenger. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. It looks like, look at here. Elisha didn't even go to the king of Israel. He sent to the king, to God be the glory. I might not go to the city, I'll just pray and the power of God will move in the city. God will pray through you. You don't even have to go to that place if the Lord doesn't say to go. But if you would pray, if you would humble yourself and pray, if you would humble yourself and fast, if you would humble yourself and intercede, glory be to God. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me. Why would you think that he would come out to you? You sent a messenger to the king of Israel by way of the king of Syria, by way of a messenger, and neither one of you went but sent a messenger. Now when somebody else sends a messenger, now he's haughty. 
The Bible says pride won't enter in. Prayer is about humility. Baptism, full submersion in the water in the name of Jesus is about humility. So they're trying to bring that Catholic Trinitarianism and they want to be baptized in this Trinitarian way to try to stay in line with Catholicism. Some people don't even understand what they're doing. Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. You're trying to stay in line with Catholicism. But you, you say, well, the Holy Ghost is cool with the speaking in tongues. Other people say, I don't like the Holy Ghost. He said, hearing and they don't hear, seeing and they won't see, lest they would hear, lest they would see, and turn. Again, if you're ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. You're trying to stay in line with Catholicism. So you're trying to stick with the Trinity, which is, which is not biblical. But they don't want to read the Bible. But if they do read the Bible, they only re want to read the parts that they like. Anything in which you get convicted, anything that makes you feel like, oh God, I'm sorry, they don't want to read that part. Try, they heap upon themselves, teachers, trying to find a church where you're not convicted, trying to find a church where the pastor doesn't teach on sin, trying to find a church where I can be baptized how I want to be baptized in the name of Scooby-Doo and Mickey Mouse, all, all into the name of Donald Duck. Trying to find a church where it's just some clique with your buddies and if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus and if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost and if you're not praying and fasting and studying the word and asking God to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you and purge you of your own vanity every single day all day long I can tell you what's going to happen when you die you're going to go straight to hell holiness is humility I don't choose the way I minister God I'm the slave of the Lord Jesus Christ if I was going to choose how I'd minister, it wouldn't be like this. I'm sweating. I have to, pl I'm playing the entire time. I'm the one singing. I don't have any help. I, in my vanity, I would have a drummer, a bass guitar player, alto, soprano, and tenor. I'd have a. Br I don't want to wear black. I like wearing, you see, in my vanity. But God says, you do what I tell you. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. He said, what is it to thee? Follow me. He, Jesus told Peter, follow me. Corner, you already denied me thrice. Follow me. You're all in your feelings, all in your emotions, going through changes. God said, do what I say to do. If you don't, you're going to wish you did. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, predestinated believer. And that, that, that's not Calvinism, once saved, always saved. It means providence. It means God's going to get what he wants. And if we keep running and keep trying to do things our way, the Lord's going to teach us a lesson. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. That's a delusion. Do you see? He's like some movie director. In his mind, he's imagined how he's going to be delivered. Leprosy means that your body parts begin to die and they begin to decay and they begin to fall off. And you must not be sick enough if you've come up with some delusion of how you're gonna be healed. You're gonna be healed however God decides to heal you. And you should be appreciative. God help us, Jesus. Deliver us from vanity. And he said, are not our Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Again, nationalism. We're dealing with racism, ethnocentrism, nationalism, sexism. God move how I want you to move now. Like God is some animal. Some, whoa, whoa. Is there not better rivers in my neighborhood? I mean, I don't like how those people worship. I don't like how those people, I don't like their music. I don't like their flow. You're a racist and God's not in you. We are all baptized into one body by one spirit. I don't like it when women are preaching. I don't like it when you're, you're, that's discrimination to God. God help us, Jesus. I'm on, I want to decide how God's going to move how I want him to move. Uh-oh, if somebody starts speaking in tongues, better escort them out. Don't go back to that place. Those people are of the devil. 
God moves how he wants to move. I, I work for God. God don't work for me. I'm the slave of the Lord Jesus. God's not my slave. I'm the slave of the Lord Jesus. May I not wash in them and be clean? If you were going to do something your own way, why did, why'd you even come to Israel? You're going to ask somebody to pray for you and then try to tell them how you want to be prayed for? Don't pray for me like this. Pray for me. Give me a hug when you pray for me. What? The Bible says pride won't enter in. When you pray for me, don't be too loud. When you pray for me, I want you to pray for me in German. When you pray for me, I want you to pray for me in Zulu. When you pray for me, I want... What? God's going to move how God moves. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he saith to thee, wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped him. God always has somebody to correct you. If you're predestinated, Romans chapter 8. Providence. God's always going to have a wife, somebody, a husband to correct you. Or God will just correct you himself and speak to you. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. You see baptism again? Baptism is a humbling experience. Folks don't want to get wet. They don't want their hair to get messed up. They don't want their makeup to get messed up. They don't want to have to take off their earrings. They don't want to, that, that water, I don't know, I don't know. They want to be baptized in the way of Catholicism, uh, Father, Son, and Holy. They don't want to be baptized in the name of Jesus. They don't want to speak in tongues. They don't want to have anything to do with the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. You see, he was, it says, dipped himself seven times. That's baptism. He had to humble himself and baptize himself in water that he didn't think. It says, look, he doesn't think that water, the word clean in verse 12, the word clean in verse 13. I got to baptize myself in this dirty river. Again, dealing with racism. I got to baptize myself in some river in Israel. Nationalism. He's from the Syrian. He's the captain of the Syrian host, but he's had to come to Israel. Bind that racism up and cast it out. Bind that nationalism up. Bind that sexism up. Glory be to God. We are neither male nor female in the spirit. It's not Jew or Gentile or Greek. This color of that, we are all baptized into one body by one spirit, the spirit of the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshu, Jesus, Jeso, Isus, Yeshua, Jeso, Busa, Jeso, Busa, Jehovah, Retepile. I victoria in el nombre de Jesús. No padre el enemigo vencerá nuestras almas porque victoria hay victoria en el nombre de Jesús. There is victory in the name of Jesus again. Jehovah Retepile. Jehovah, we trust in you. Again, El Shaddai Adonai Uwe. El Shaddai Adonai, you are. Glory be to God. The Lord will deal with me and say, don't speak English. I want you to sing a song in Spanish. Fuego de Dios. That's not me speaking in the Holy Ghost. That's God saying sometimes, speak in Spanish. As a sign of humility. I might tell you to speak in German. I don't know German. Well, you better get to learning it in the Holy Ghost. Ask of the one who gives wisdom liberally and abradeth not. Don't tell God you don't know German. Just say, God, teach me. You want me to sing in German? Teach me. The Lord will tell you to play the guitar. Don't tell God I don't know how to play. Just say, God, show you. Just go get the guitar and say, God, show yourself. And he'll begin to play the guitar through you. You don't tell God what you don't know how to do. You say, God, show yourself. You don't, we don't dictate to God. If God says to preach, preach. No, I don't have a church. I don't have a, I'm not licensed. I'm not ordained. God didn't ask you about all that. He said, preach. You say, Father, show yourself. Just do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Just be open to the Lord. Obedience. He said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now watch this. Here's the key, verse 15. 
and he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Glory be to God. When he came to testify that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was the God of the earth, there he said, There is no God in all the earth but in Israel. That's a confession. In the Old Testament, all they had to do was confess the Lord and repent of their sins. Now in the New Testament, now that Jesus has died on the cross, now we have to be baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in other tongues. But this man, the captain of the Syrian host, said that there is no God. Whoa. These are idol worshipers. He said, there is no God in all the earth. You could be killed for that. No, don't care. There is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. That's why we keep saying, pray for Israel. The Bible says, pray for Israel. Pray for those who are of the Abrahamic seed, biologically, but also pray for those who live in Israel and Palestine. There is no God in all the earth, but the God. Now we are engrafted in by the blood and the spirit of Christ into the covenant that God made with Abraham that we would be more than the sands of the sea, more than the sands of, 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 the, of the earth. Glory be. Because all of us who are being baptized in the name of Jesus, all of us who are being filled with the spirit of Jesus, the evidence of speaking in other tongues, now we are engrafted in to that Abrahamic covenant. There is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and the governments are upon his shoulder. And with his stripes, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, there is no God in all the earth but Yeshua Jesus. Jesus, we love you. God bless you. Stay prayerful. God, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands on myself by proxy for this dear soul. Holiness, holiness, and more holiness. Bless them with conviction and repentance. Baptizing them in the, in the name of Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Full submersion in the water. And fill them with the Holy Ghost. Full submersion in the Holy Spirit. And the evidence of is speaking in other languages by the Spirit of God. I bind up any satanic, demonic assignment against them. I cast out every evil spirit. I cast out every sickness and disease. And I lose holiness in the name. It says whatever's bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. And I bind up any evil from this dear listener and I cast it out but I lose holiness, holiness, holiness and more holiness in the name of the Lord Jesus right now Jesus God bless you, we love you, stay prayerful all my worship let all my worship hallelujah all my praise belong to you nobody but you yes all my worship We love you, we love you, we love you, hallelujah. All of my worship is...